In this world of technology, things are ever changing, rearranging. You need someone to help you out. I know someone who can. Come and take a journey with me as we go through the land of technology. You'll never be alone. You'll be with Paul. I'm a dead slain in the tech zone. As we close out 2018, I am Paul Amadeus Lane. You are in the tech zone. What were some of the highlights that you remember in 2018 when it comes to technology? Uh, some of the new things that, that dropped. I'm going to do a show specifically about some of the things in 2018 uh, in tech related news that kind of blew, blew our mind and blew us away. As you can see, I say some of the things a lot, right? I'm working on those words. They call them word whispers or word whiskers. I forget one of those things. But I'm working on it. I really am I'm trying to say educated. You know, that's what I'm trying to do. So when it comes to tech news, how many of us remember a lot of the reports about cyber security, things being breached, um, people's uh, data information being compromised? There is a company out there that's let's say giving everyone their grades when it comes to cybersecurity and the industries out there. And they've been a part of my show since the inception uh, over two years ago. And I can't believe we're over a hundred episodes now. So thank you guys so much. Well, my next guest was there when the journey began and is still with me now to give us some more insight when it comes to cybersecurity. And let me tell you something, you're going to be shocked. And I'm so happy to have back with me here on the show, a gentleman that I've interviewed a couple of times, always love his insight, cybersecurity expert, COO, co-founder of Security Scorecard, Sam Kazume. Sam, great catching up with you, my friend. How you doing? Great, man. I'm happy to be here. Happy to be back. Thanks for having me. Hey, great to have you, my friend. And you know what, Sam? I was so happy to get my uh, cybersecurity scorecard report in the email last week. As soon as I got it, I emailed you right away because some of the, um, I guess some of the, the findings were very troubling to me, uh, especially when it comes to the education field. So before we delve into the report about the, the education field and everything, um, for our listeners out there who are, are not familiar with what your company uh, does over there at a, a Security Scorecard, why don't you give them a rundown before we get into the meat of the, the interview? Sure. So uh, I run a company called Security Scorecard. Security Scorecard uh, is a cybersecurity rating company. So just like you have uh, credit ratings, right, for businesses and for consumers that tell us uh, the level of financial uh, risk and trustworthiness for a company, we produce the same type of rating, except it tells you the cybersecurity resiliency for a business. And uh, we rate uh, every company in the world. We rate millions of companies. It's all done instantly uh, and non-invasively. So our customers go in, they put in a name of a company and they get the cybersecurity rating. And then they can use that to make decisions on whether or not they can trust that company with the data and do business with that company. And you know, Sam, uh, you guys really do some uh, extensive reporting at almost uh, 24 Hundred companies that you guys or industries uh, that you guys uh, research on there, twenty four hundred uh, companies. Is that right? For the for the education sector, but we rate uh, we rate literally millions of companies all around the world. So uh, we've got scores on millions of companies computed uh, on a daily basis. And what we do is we uh, analyze not just the companies but the the industries trends and performance uh, usually uh, on a regular basis. And usually once or twice a quarter, we put out these reports that talk about the industry performance for a specific industry. And the most recent one, which you got the email alert for was our uh, education industry report. And it kind of blew me away, uh, Sam, when I, when I looked at how the education sector is doing when it comes to cybersecurity close to the close or at the bottom of, of all the industries out there. And when you guys really did uh, the research on it, what, what was like the determining factor of why they're scoring so low? It's a good question. I mean, when we look at um, when we look at uh, the industry landscape, uh, there's usually a couple of industries that always produce and perform really well, and there's a couple of industries that don't. 
So you think about what are the industries that produce really well, like have good cybersecurity hygiene. Well, those are industries like technology, like um, financial services, uh, because you think about it, those companies like uh, uh, banks and financial institutions, they're handling some of the most sensitive information that we have, and they invest and hire staff, resources, software, hardware to protect, protect the data that so you think about financial services, probably some of the best security in the world, right? Like we always refer to it as like bank level security. Um, and then there's some industries that generally don't perform very well. And this isn't the first time that we've seen these industries at the bottom of the list. So these are industries like government. Government is usually at or near the bottom mm -hmm. and education. Education is usually at or near the bottom uh, of the kind of stack rank of all the all the industries, education is usually at or near the bottom. Uh, why is that the case? I mean, there's a number of contributing reasons, but let's start with this one. You think about education industry, right? Education, uh, like schools, universities, uh, how do they protect the information? What does the landscape of the campus look like? Well, you think about it, you know, a university, they have like a very complex landscape to manage. It's not like a a company where you come to the office, you've got to bring in your special company device, right? And you're connecting to the company network. University is a little bit different. Universities have part of their network that is designed for the school system, like the labs and the computers that are connected to the university systems. And then there's, right, which handle the scheduling and hold the uh, students' grades, hold the curriculums, all of that information. So there's part of the core network, but then there's this other part of the university network, right? Which is the part that the students connect to. So you go on campus and you expect Wi-Fi to be broadcasting everywhere in the library, outside in the park, in the dorms, right? That's a separate part of the network. And unlike a financial institution, um, um, it's sort of a bring your own device type of environment where students can literally bring you know, their laptop from home, their mobile devices, their iPads, and those devices that they're bringing onto the network, they don't have the same types of security controls that you would have in your company. When you get a, a corporate issued device, it has all sorts of bells and whistles like antivirus and endpoint protection that's monitoring your the activities of that computer. There's policies to say you can only use this computer in special ways and you can't go to certain sites because they're blocked by the firewall but you go on a university campus and, and none of those same controls exist. Literally, students can bring in whatever computers they want. Those computers might be infected with malicious files or malware or viruses, which then go and propagate to other student devices. So really, it, it, it starts by a couple of things. It starts, the reason that we see education's uh, industry so low, complex network, um, and, uh, and the people that are responsible for the security uh, don't have the same level of controller resources that you see in those positive performing industries like financial services. Wow. I mean, this is like really blowing me away, uh, Sam, because these are things I, I've never thought about, you know, the environment and everything. And everybody has a device, K through 12. You know, you have kids in kindergarten right everybody now. Everybody has a device. Everybody has a device. Now, the devices that are issued by a school, those devices, like if you're in school, you get a, a school issued laptop. There's gonna be some security controls and protective measures on that computer. But when you go into graduate school, like when you go into, into university as uh, you know, you graduate high school and you start going into college, whether you're getting your bachelor's, master's, PhD, well then it becomes sort of a more of a wild west scenario where all those same types of controls, they don't really exist. The university might say, hey, as a student, you know, Paul, you get free access to antivirus. You just go to this website and you download antivirus and we recommend that you do it. And maybe they make you create a strong password, but they really don't have, the university doesn't have that finite granular control of your machine because it's your machine. They didn't issue it to you. But if you go work for a company, that's a company or you go get a, a laptop from the school, that's a, that's a government or a school owned device. They own it and they control it. Um, whereas when you bring your personal device, you own it, you control it. And nobody's enforcing that you have to have those same types of security softwares uh, installed. So Sam, what, what can be done um, for devices that are not issued by the school? What, what can schools do to make sure 
that they are keeping everyone's uh, data safe, even though it's not a fault of their own. It's the students yeah. bringing the things. What 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 can uh, what can the cool. educational uh, organizations do? I mean, there's a, there's a couple of things education. I mean, I would start number one, education uh, facilities can invest more in security, hands down, because when you go to a university or a school system today, um, again, drawing comparison to financial services industry, it's not like financial services. If you go to a bank, there's a dedicated person who's a chief security officer, and they have a team of hundreds, sometimes thousands of people whose sole job is dedicated to making sure your bank information, your debit card, all your sensitive information is protected and it's secure, right? You go to a you go to an office of a bank, there could be a whole floor dedicated to security. Universities don't have that. There's usually like one person who's the head of IT, and part of their responsibility of IT is also to implement security controls. Well, when you don't have a team of people that are dedicated, solely dedicated to security, they're gonna put less attention toward it. So I would say number one thing universities could do is and I'm sure all the IT administrators at universities will appreciate me saying it, hire more security resources, hire more security headcount, Put allocate more budget for headcount, for IT headcount that's dedicated to cybersecurity, 100%. That's, that's step one. Once you have somebody focused solely on cybersecurity you're, and they're observing just cybersecurity, nothing else, you're gonna see immediate boost in effects. Um, so that's that's number one. Don't share responsibilities between managing IT and managing the security. Get separate, dedicated security headcount. Number two is, which we've started to see taking place, but I think this could be increased. Seeing universities uh, build uh, more foundational relationships with the independent software vendors and strike and forge partnerships where they can produce and provide students with more uh, types of practical software that students can use to raise their awareness about security to make sure the machine is more secure a lot of you know a lot of there's a lot of great tools that are built into windows or mac that can keep the, the system secure but then there's another level of software that uh, that students can install to monitor and protect their information and uh if i'm a broke college student i'm probably not that's the last thing on my mind is going and buying security software which is going to you know put more alerts on my machine but if my university offers me those um, uh, for free, right, through like a, a special portal because they struck a partnership. Well, now all I have to do is click a button and I can get the software that I need. And you see it today, right? You sign up for, uh, you know, internet at home and AT&T or Spectrum gives you a bunch of promotional offers of other software that they're gonna offer to you at low cost or at free to make sure that you're protected. Universities could do that same model. Now, well, what's been kind of the, um the uh, feedback or how how have universities re received this kind of push and nudge to try to do do this either? are they receptive to it or are they kind of like well we're fine everything's good or well, what's been uh, they, they've been they've been pretty receptive in fact good. um over the years this isn't the first time that we've published the the education report we've been uh releasing report on this industry for a number of years and i would say over those years we've seen Many universities button up. Uh, in fact, many have become customers, and uh, they take they take this information very seriously. Uh, they respond. They start to uh, react, respond. They start to kind of extinguish some of those key areas of concern, and then they they are actually making investment into fortifying and securing the network. So there are many universities where two three years ago they had a bad grade, like a D or an F. But today, even though the industry as a whole maybe is not performing as high as it could be. Um, we see many universities taking the information very seriously, responding, and actually improving their grades. So companies that, uh, universities that used to be a C or a D or an F now have an A or a B. And many of them uh, have actually become customers of Scorecard. So we're interacting with them uh, directly. Well, one thing I, I like about, about your company, too, you always let us know what our rights are. Because in the report, you talk about um, what the regulators say and about keeping uh, things private and everything. Why is that so important to put that in the, in, the, in the score that you guys do? Yeah, for us, the you know our objective is not to is not to call people out. Our our objective is to not point at the bad thing and say, oh, this is the worst uh, performing industry, or oh, everybody has a DRNF. What we're trying to do is raise folks, uh, raise people's attention and awareness to the problem, but then also empower them to fix it. 
So if you look at Security Scorecard today, we actually give access to uh, any university uh, or any company to their own scorecard at no cost. Um, so people, you know, people can uh, essentially access their information, uh, see the details behind, well, what exactly are we doing well? And where exactly could there be some areas for concern that we should focus on? And we give that information to universities um, in sort of like a freemium type of model. So, uh, so for us, it's not about it's not about calling out uh, calling out industries or companies. It's not about uh, extorting companies, but it's really about raising their level of attention awareness and then empowering them with the information that they need to provide a feedback loop with us uh, and improve the score. And that can all be done free of charge. And, and the net effect of it is you see a, an, an uplift or a boost uh, to the number of uh, companies to start producing positively. And historically, we hadn't offered that same level of uh, free access to uh, universities, but, but we do it today. And uh, that seems to be a turning point because now companies can take ownership and uh, start to start to turn the ship around. I love it. I love it. And, and Sam, looking at the at the scorecard, I was I was really shocked to see how the food industry was, uh, you know, one, one of the top performers when it comes to to uh, cybersecurity. Why is that? Oh, that's a good question. Well, the food industry is an interesting one because the food industry uh uh, doesn't generally speaking, they don't have uh, a huge technology footprint. So their exposure is relatively low. If you think about the food industry, um, they don't have a lot of vendors, uh, meaning they might have the vendors who ship the food, right? So like logistics vendors who ship the raw produce and the merchandise to each one of the restaurants, to each one of their stores. Um, really they have, you know, credit card machines, right. That allow the patrons to pay for their orders and for their food. Um, but that's probably the extent of the sensitivity of information is payment processing, uh, payment processing, uh, for the food that's, uh, being purchased at the restaurant. But, but outside of that, they don't have like a huge technology footprint. I mean, it's, it's kind of similar to retail, except retail usually has an e-commerce arm where they have not just brick and mortar stores, but they also have a website where you can go and shop and enter your information. So there's more sensitive information flowing through with, you know, with restaurants, um, they don't have many vendors. They're not really a vendor themselves to anybody. They're essentially uh, servicing the, the customers and the patrons that want to go eat at the restaurant. So there's low technology, small technology footprint, low volume of, uh, of super sensitive information that's flowing through the network besides the payment card information. And a lot of times when you go pay for your food at a restaurant, you're actually not, uh, you're actually not even sending your information through the restaurant's network. You're sending it directly to the payment processor, like a visa or a MasterCard. Um, so yeah, just, just a very low exposure rate and, uh, not a, not a huge volume of sensitive, inf sensitive information that they're storing. Nice. And thank you for explaining that. Cause when I saw that, I was like, wow, this is well, at the top of the list of, of doing doing things the right way when it comes to cybersecurity, but thank you for you know explaining explaining the process when it comes to that. Now, before I let yeah. you go, is there anything else that you'd like to bring up uh, about the uh, uh, cybersecurity uh, scorecard, about education, any other industries out there? Um, what else can you uh, share with us if you like? Sure. So I think um, I think as we go into the new year, we're going to see some uh, exciting reports come out in a number of other industries, including uh, technology, retail. You know, when we look at the uh, when we do these industry analyses, every industry is different. It's like a fingerprint. Everyone has their own kind of configuration of strengths and weaknesses. Um, and uh, and um, I'm excited kind of going into 2019. We're already starting to prepare some of these additional reports. And we're seeing, um, we're seeing very interesting findings and patterns that we've never seen before in a couple of industries. I'm not going to save, I'm not going to say which ones I'm going to save it for the next uh, conversation that we have, but there's some interesting things that we haven't seen in previous years. The other thing worth mentioning, which I think is just a massive uh, milestone is uh, Security Scorecard as a company, we've just hit our millionth scorecard mark. So we've just hit a, a milestone as a company where we've just rated now our millionth company. That means we have a million companies, over actually now over a million companies in our database where we produce scores on a daily basis. Um, if 
you know, if you go back to conversations, I think I was on the show a couple of years ago, if you go back to those conversations, we were rating about a couple hundred thousand companies on a daily basis. Now we've seen that, uh, that database scale where we've got millions and millions of companies. Why is this so important? Because we can really literally rate any company in the world in minutes, large companies, small companies, mom and pop shops, the pizza restaurant on the corner. Um, and we have customers who are interacting with all these different types of businesses. Now our customers can get the scores faster um, with, uh, with more accuracy. So we're really excited. We're celebrating it uh, as a company this week. Uh, this is literally four times the amount of uh, scorecards than we see in any competitor system. And, uh, and our customers are thrilled because they can get the data faster and make decisions faster. Wow. Congratulations, uh, uh, Sam. That's, that's a huge accomplishment, my friend. You know, that is, and it's been a couple of years. Yeah. When I first had you on the show and, uh, you've been back a couple of times and to see the growth of the company is, is nothing short of amazing. And, um, gosh, keep up the great work. And, and if ones would like to find out more information about uh, security uh, scorecard, and let's say maybe they have a company or industry, they wanna see how they score. What's the process of doing that? Super easy. Um, any company can go directly to securityscorecard.com, request request your uh, free score. You literally put in just the email address, and then within a few minutes, you have your company's score in your inbox. And then from there, um, you can interact with, uh, with security scorecard team. Uh, you can also access the platform to see more details behind the score. So it's a completely uh, simple, easy process, 100% automated, streamlined. You go to our website, securityscorecard.com, put in your email address. Within a few minutes, you've got your rating inside of your inbox. And then we can interact uh, with us. We can talk about the score. If you need some assistance, we give you access to the platform to see the details and empower every company to fix their score. We're seeing scorecard, Paul, it's crazy. We're literally seeing scorecard become the standard for doing business. Just like you can't go get a loan or you can't get underwritten for insurance without having your S&P score. Uh, just like that, more and more companies are mandating that you must have the security scorecard in order to do business. I love it. I love it. And don't forget, you have to come back and let us know what that other uh, industry is too once we get that uh, report. Oh, I'm not going to forget. No, I didn't forget. Yeah, we've got a couple of things uh, percolating uh, in the kitchen right now. So going into the new year, um, you and I will have another conversation and we'll be talking about uh, other crazy things going on in this uh, in this uh, space. Hey, I'm looking I'm looking forward to it. And, and I'm so glad that our paths uh, crossed a few years ago and, and we were able to u- lean on you as a resource when it comes to cybersecurity and what you guys are doing is, is, is nothing short of amazing. Uh, cybersecurity expert, COO, co-founder of Security Scorecard. Thank you so much for joining me, my friend, uh, Sam Kazame, and uh, look forward to catching up with you soon. Likewise. Thanks, Paul, for having me. Appreciate your time. Once again, a huge shout out to my friend, Sam Kazume, giving us some insight. Cybersecurity expert. Education. Go figure, right? Education try to judge us with grades, right? Can mess up, mess us up. We get bad grades. We can't get no job or nothing. But they messed up when it comes to cybersecurity. I mean, come on, universities, you know. Where are my glasses? I wear glasses sometime when I read. I want to be like my old teachers, put the glasses down to the tip of the nose and look at them like, what's going on? What's up? I mean, don't y'all charge enough for tuition? Y'all can't get this together? I mean, I'm just saying, you know, maybe some of the higher ups who make all the money there can maybe scale down on some of the country club fees. I don't know. To make sure that data is safe. I'm just saying. But Sam and his uh, crew over there are doing some great things when it comes to uh, keeping us abreast on how other industries are doing when it comes to cybersecurity. All right. When we get back, it's all about CES 2019 that's beginning in days. I'm going to be joined by someone who's part of the inaugural class of being recognized by my good friends over there at CES. When we get back, she's going to be joining us. We'll be right back after these messages. Remember, connect with me, Paul AmadeusLane.com. Be right back after these messages, folks. In this world of technology, things are ever changing, rearranging. You need someone to help you out. I know someone who can. Come and take a journey with me as we go through the land of technology. You'll never be alone. You'll be with Paul. I'm a dead slain in the tech zone. 